Welcome to From His Heart with Pastor Jeff Shreve, who's in his practical series this month called The Walk. Today, you'll learn the timely truth about how you can trust Jesus in the most difficult circumstances, especially when your faith is fragile. about fragile things. I imagine everyone in this room or most in this room have had the experience of building a house of cards. We used to do that when I was a kid before there were uh, more than three or four channels and there wasn't any internet or anything like that and you'd have family time and what would you do was sometimes you get out the card table and you play cards and after you played cards then you make a card house. And you know when you build a card house you gotta be careful that nobody bumps the table because that card house is fragile. Another thing I did when I was a kid, we would go out into the yard, sometimes into a field if we were playing football or something, and you'd find a dandelion. And you'd pick that thing up and it was so pretty. But it didn't take much, just a little bit of and all those petals, those, uh, that flower head would just blow off because a dandelion is very, very fragile. Everyone in this room knows how fragile an egg is. I mean, you have to be careful with an egg because it can easily crack. If you you just put too much pressure on the egg, it can crack. I'm also a magician. (laughs) And that's, that's the way it is with fragile things. They just can't handle much. You know, sometimes our faith is a lot like the dandelion, the house of cards, the egg that so easily cracks. It it doesn't take much, just just it gets knocked, it gets hit, it gets blown on, It, it, it feels the heat and the pressure goes up and then the faith comes crashing down. Hey, what do you do when your faith is fragile? You know, the Lord doesn't want us to have a fragile faith. He wants us to have a strong faith. He wants us to not waver in unbelief, as the scripture says about Abraham. He, Abraham grew strong in faith. He trusted in the promises of God, even though sight told him this ain't going to happen. We walk by faith and not by sight. So the Lord wants us to be strong in faith, but he knows that we so often have a fragile faith. And so he speaks in his word to the weakness and the fragility of our faith. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus had taken Peter and James and John up to the mountain of transfiguration and he peeled back the flesh of his humanity and he let those three guys see his glory. And he became white like lightning. And Moses and Elijah appeared with him, and the disciples heard the Father's voice as a cloud came over uh, their heads on the Mount of Transfiguration, and the Father said, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. And Peter and James and John experienced the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ like no one had ever experienced before. So they come down off the mountain. Jesus said, don't tell anyone what happened until the Son of Man has been lifted up. And so they don't. But they come back from the mountaintop experience and they come down and they run smack dab into fragile faith. Mark 9, verse 14. And when they came back to the disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. And immediately when the entire crowd saw him, they were amazed and began running up to greet him. And he asked them, what are you discussing with them? And one of the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought you my son possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it dashes him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and stiffens out. He has an epileptic seizure And I told your disciples to cast it out, and they could not do it. 
In Luke's gospel, he said he begged the disciples to cast it out, and they could not do it. And Jesus answered them and said, O unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into a convulsion. And falling to the ground, he began rolling about and foaming at the mouth. And he asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And it has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father cried out and began saying, I do believe, help my unbelief. So let's look and see what we can observe from this story. Three insights I want to share with you concerning fragile faith. Insight number one, fragile faith often comes from great disappointments. When you experience great disappointments in life, your faith can easily get fragile from this to this. Look at verse 17 and verse 18. And one of the crowd answered him, Teacher, I have brought you my son, possessed with a spirit which makes him mute, and whenever it seizes him, it dashes him to the ground, and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and stiffens out. And I told your disciples, I begged your disciples to cast it out, and they could not do it. This man was experiencing such tremendous disappointment. He had high hopes when he came to the disciples, but they couldn't help him. They couldn't do anything. There was no power there to cast out that demon and to heal his son. And as the scripture says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. He had hope, but then his hopes were dashed. He experienced great disappointment. Now, I think that, that most of us can relate to this guy, and he is such a great picture of what happens to us when we experience great disappointment. And many of you here today, you're facing heartbreaking circumstances. Heartbreaking circumstances. This father was facing heartbreaking circumstances. The circumstances related to his son. Now, there's one thing when you're hurting, but there's another thing when you see your son, your daughter, your loved one hurting. Because you want want so, as a parent, to protect your son and your daughter, and this guy couldn't do it. There is no pain like family pain. No pain like family pain. Man, you can have trouble at work, but that pales in comparison to something happening at home with your son, with your daughter, with your spouse, with a loved one. There is no pain like family pain, and so we come with our faith and it gets knocked because we experience disappointment, you're facing heartbreaking circumstances. And then not only do you have heartbreaking circumstances, but you don't know why you're facing these heartbreaking circumstances. You don't know why this stuff is happening to you. Jesus asked this man, he said, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And it's been terrible. He says it it, it has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. Not only was he having seizures and rolling around and foaming at the mouth, but this thing was slamming him into the ground and this spirit would take over this kid and and try and find an open fire pit. There were lots of them around because that's how they cook and throw him into the fire and try and throw him into a well to drown him, to burn him, to kill him, to destroy him. The father didn't understand why. The Bible doesn't say why. When you and I face difficulties and circumstances that break our hearts so often, we don't know why. You know, sometimes we know why. It's because we did something that caused this to happen. But other times, it's like, I don't understand why this happened. I was just driving down the road, minding my own business, and somebody was drunk, and they came from the other side of the road and hit me head on, and now I'm in the hospital clinging to life. Why, God, did this happen to me? You know, we ask that question. That's our favorite question to ask. Why? Why, God? And 99.9% of the time, God doesn't say why. He doesn't tell us why. And so we get frustrated. And then 
what did this man do? He did what many of us do in his time of grief and and heartbrokenness and, and great problem. He comes to the disciples. He comes to church, so to speak. That's where we would put it in, in our vernacular. He comes to church, and the church has no power to help him in his need. He comes to the disciples, and the disciples received him and prayed for him, and nothing, nothing. Now, the scripture makes it clear, Mark chapter six, that the Lord had given them authority over unclean spirits, and they had cast out unclean spirits. But now, with this guy, with this situation, with this boy, no power. They couldn't cast it out And so he has his heartbreaking circumstances and he doesn't know why and he comes to God's people and they don't have an answer for him. They don't have power for him and he is so disappointed. Why did he say to Jesus, if you can do anything, help us, have pity on us? What was the if statement? What what, what was that all about? It's what happened to him earlier before Jesus got there. Your followers couldn't help me. Maybe you can't help me either. If you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Hey, fragile faith often comes from great disappointments. Insight number two, fragile faith needs to look beyond fragile disciples. Verse 19, when the man told Jesus that I came to the disciples and they they couldn't help me. I asked them, I begged them to cast it out and they could not do it. Verse 19, it says, and he answered them and said, oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. Now that was a Pretty, that's a scathing rebuke from the Lord Jesus Christ and it's to unbelieving generation but it's really pointed at his own followers. It's pointed at the nine, the guys that were with him. He chose 12, one was a devil, Judas, but he chose these guys to be with him and he had given them authority to do these things, to preach in his name, to heal in his name, to cast out demons in his name, and they couldn't do it. And the Lord is focusing this rebuke upon his disciples upon the nine. You guys have fragile faith. And because the disciples had fragile faith, they weren't able to do what the Lord wanted them to do. And this man, boy, he really had fragile faith and he wasn't able to see beyond his difficulty. If you can do anything, Lord, help us. Help us if you can. And Jesus seized on that statement. If you can, all things are possible to him who believes. And we need to look past the weak disciples, the fragile disciples to the Lord. And then insight number three, fragile faith needs to learn an important lesson. Well, what happened in this story? The man says to Jesus, I do believe, help my unbelief. He was so honest about his fragile faith. Verse 25, and when Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, spirit, saying to it, you deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. And after crying out and throwing him into terrible convulsions, it came out and the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him and he got up. And then... Shifting gears to this story, let's see what Matthew has to say as he closes out this story. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it shall move, and nothing shall be impossible to you, but this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Very, very interesting. See, we have the the fragile faith of the man, the dad, and then we have the fragile faith of the disciples. And the disciples' fragile faith, they didn't understand it. They said, 
Lord, I don't understand it. You've given us power. Why could we not cast out the demon? We had been casting out demons, but then we hit this demon. Why could we not cast it out? And he said, well, it's because of the littleness of your faith. And then he compares their faith to a mustard seed. Now, this was really puzzling me because I thought, okay, a mustard seed, it was the smallest seed that they knew. We have a picture of a mustard seed just to give you an idea of how small that is. It was the smallest seed that any of those people in that day knew about. And so Jesus said, you couldn't cast out the demon because of the littleness of your faith. So if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, now, you could look at that one of two ways. Either their faith was smaller than that, which is, man, you were getting really, really small. You got to go under a microscope to see their faith. Or there was a deeper meaning to the mustard seed faith. See, the thing about a mustard seed, it's small. As Susan mentioned in her prayer, it's small, but when it's planted, it grows, and it grows larger than any of the garden plants and it can get 8, 10, 12 feet. Here's a picture of the mustard seed. It, it becomes almost like a tree. It's this big, big bush. And Jesus said the birds of the, the air can lodge in its branches. That's the mustard seed. It starts out small, but it doesn't stay small. What's the thing about mustard seed faith? Mustard seed faith is faith that grows. It's not faith that stays small. It's faith that grows strong and grows tall and is able to withstand because it is strong. It's not constantly fragile. Here's the thing. These guys, very, very interesting. These guys had been given a gift from the Lord, authority from the Lord to cast out demons. But when they hit this demon, they couldn't do it. Why? Well, reading between the lines, it's because they weren't praying. They weren't praying. They had this gift, but they couldn't access the gift. They couldn't access the power because they weren't connected to the power source, which is God. And the way you connect to the power source is through prayer. Now, you mark it down. Prayer is the avenue to strong faith. Prayer is the avenue to strong faith. You want to be a person of strong faith? You got to pray. You got to pray. Why? Because prayer connects you to God. And God is the source of your strength. And so if I'm not praying very much, I'm not connected to God very much. And I don't care what gift you have. If you're not connecting to God on a regular basis through prayer, that gift is going to lack power. Now, God has gifted me in the area of sharing his word. But I can't rest in that. Well, I just have this gift. I'm just going to rest in this gift. No, I have to constantly come before the Lord because the only way that my preaching has power is if God blesses, if the Holy Spirit of God takes the truth of what I'm saying and imparts it to your heart. And that comes from me spending time with the Lord and praying. The apostles in Acts chapter 6, when there was there were problems in the church and there were squabbles between uh, some of the widows. They say, it's not good for us to spend our time uh, serving tables. Select from among you seven men of good reputation who can do that. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Prayer and the ministry of the word. What is going to help you grow to become a person of faith? Prayer and the word of God. You can't get away from those two things. They're critical. It's like air. You're not going to be able to live without air. And prayer and the word of God, are that's our air to connect with God. And, and when we pray, we talk to God. And when we read God's word, he talks to us. Those two things are critical. Prayer is the avenue to strong faith. And it's the evidence of strong faith. It's the evidence of strong faith. When you meet somebody that has strong faith, you find them praying. And just because they get knocked or they get jostled or they get blown on or they get the heat turned up, they don't quit praying. They don't quit trusting. They don't quit praising. They continue to trust God. They say, with Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Have some of you quit on your prayers because it hadn't happened yet? You know, what exactly took place with the disciples? The, the, the father came with his son, and he's cruelly demon-possessed. Please pray for my son. And so they prayed, maybe uh, Philip and Thomas, and they got together with the others, and they prayed, and uh, 
Lord, cast out this demon. Nothing happened. Mm, let's try harder. You pray this time, Thomas. Thomas, Lord, we ask you to, to remove this demon from this guy and nothing happened. And maybe they prayed one more time and they said, uh, James, the less you pray. Uh, I, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel when we call on James the less. You know, there's not a lot in the Bible about that disciple. But anyway, so he prays, nothing. And they just conclude. Now we don't, we don't, no, we're not able to do it. I mean, we prayed three times and it didn't happen, so we're just done. We couldn't do anything. Hey, the scribes that were there were mocking them and arguing with them and scoffing at them because they were powerless. The Lord did not receive glory in their fragile faith, but they didn't keep praying. I wonder if you've thrown in the towel on prayer, on believing God for something in your life. Something that he has put into your heart that says, I'm going to do this, and you need to keep believing me. Now, listen, nobody is omniscient. Nobody never uh, or always bats a thousand on the will of God. Sometimes we miss it. But, man, it is so much better to die in faith than to live in doubt. And if God has put something into your heart, you continue to pray and continue to praise him. And don't quit on it. Fragile faith doesn't have to stay fragile. You don't have to live a Christian life like this. God wants to do something in your heart and mind, that mustard seed that grows up into a strong, strong plant, taller than all the others, stronger than all the others. But here's what you got to do. You got to take a step of faith. You got to take that initial step of faith just as Susan prayed, you got to take that little mustard seed and place it into the ground and let God grow it. you got to start moving toward the Lord. And so this is what I want us to do. No doubt there are some people in this room today. I don't know who you are, but God does, and you do, and you know you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Your name's on the church roll, but your name's not in the Lamb's Book of Life. Listen, there are going to be millions and millions and millions of people who are gonna stand before the Lord at the great white throne judgment and hear these horrible words, depart from me, I never knew you. And you say, well, Lord, my name was on the church roll. Well, whoop de doo It doesn't mean anything. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Have you really given your heart and life to Jesus Christ and received him as Savior and Lord? Some of you need to make that decision today to receive Christ and put your puny little hand of faith into his great big hand of grace and he will save you. Some of you don't have a church home and you're just kind of floating and you need to plug in and take that step of faith. Some of you have never followed the Lord in believer's baptism. You've heard me say before, baptism is not magic. It doesn't save you. It's the wedding ring of the Christian life. It shows everyone that you belong to Jesus and you're not ashamed of him. Some of you need to come to the altar and pray because you know what? You've thrown in the towel on a promise that God has given you. You've thrown in the towel on something that God put in your heart. And you said, I don't see it happening. So what's the use? Pick up the towel. And get down on your knees. Listen, prayer is the avenue to strong faith and prayer is the evidence of strong faith. And God honors his people when they trust in him. We've been talking about a walk with God, and it all begins by opening up your heart to Jesus and receiving him as your Lord and Savior. If you've never done that, I'd like to lead you in a prayer to make that decision. Just pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner and I'm lost and I can't save myself, but I believe that you are God in the flesh. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead on the third day. And Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, forgive me of all my sins, be my Lord and Savior. I surrender my all to you. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I'd love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, to know that God is using this broadcast to make a difference in your life to know that you just prayed that prayer to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Please take the time to call that toll-free number, 
write me, email me, let me know what's going on and how we can pray for you. You really are important to God and you're important to us and we're here for you. Today's message, When Your Faith is Fragile, is from Pastor Jeff Shreve's series, The Walk. The message and the series are available on CD, DVD, USB flash drive, or MP3 download when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. Hey, thanks for joining us today on the broadcast. And thanks for walking with us by faith and supporting From His Heart. You know, it's only through the faithful gifts of those who watch on TV or, or listen on daily radio that we're able to impact a lost and hurting world for Jesus. Now, your investment in the kingdom through From His Heart is making a huge difference. And I wanna say thank you. This month, we have two special gifts to show our gratitude for your support. First of all, three timely booklets in our When to Trust God collection. They'll help you walk by faith even during the worst struggles in your life. Secondly, is my new 72 message series on the Gospel of Mark titled, Who Is This Man? This comprehensive study took me nearly two years to complete, and I trust it'll be a blessing to you. With your gift this month to From His Heart, we'd like to say thank you with Pastor Jeff Shreve's new three booklet set called The When to Trust God Collection. And for your gift of $100 or more, we'll also send you all 72 audio messages from the new series, Who Is This Man? A verse-by-verse -verse study of the Gospel of Mark. It's available on a USB flash drive. Call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org to make your gift and get these timely resources today. And thank you for watching From His Heart, the viewer-supported broadcast outreach of Dr. Jeff Shreve, who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you, and He has a wonderful plan for your life. Find out more, go to fromhisheart.org. Real truth.